Hello, brethren. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. And we say that he's good. Welcome again to this episode. Let us pray, dedicating ourselves to God once again. Father God in heaven, we appreciate your goodness. We appreciate your love. We pray, Father God, that you bless our time together as we share again in your word. We pray the Lord, your Holy Spirit, who is a teacher and guide, will lead us through and that we shall continually be edified, and that we shall continually be edified in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brethren, welcome. And we thank God for the opportunity to glance at his word, to guide us. It's our compass direction. Someone ever wrote that actually the word of God is our compass direction, showing us how we should navigate in life. And here we... Uh, continuing with our navigation in the episodes that we have, we started ourselves. And I'm also sure that when we start, God is good that actually he knows our being, he knows our coming in, and he knows our going out. And so the word of God being our compass direction, we dive into it, we read it, we think through it, we meditate upon it. And most importantly, apply the precepts, apply the word that we have read, apply the statements that the Bible is, talking, is mentioning to us, and apply them into our daily life. Apply this in our situation. Apply this in our environment. And so we've been talking about men and women in the word of God, the Bible. Now, the one that comes online is called Ezekiel, Prophet Ezekiel. Remember that I've been talking about prophets, those that are writing prophets and non-writing prophets. We're talking about prophets. Those are major prophets and minor prophets, but of course the word of God remains great. But of course, I did explain why we call them, some of them major, some others minor. And... We also talked about prophets, those that are true prophets and false prophets. And what makes them uh, become false and what makes them become true prophets. And now we look at this man called Ezekiel. Ezekiel, one of the prophets, the writing prophet, actually is prophet number three in the major. Because I told, I shared that actually the major prophets are classified so because of the volume of the work that they did, because of the volume of the word that they wrote. Isaiah takes position number one. He wrote so much. There was a lot that was written. His book is, his book is big, bigger than any other. Then we have prophet Jeremiah that follows, and then Lamentations following in there. Now, prophet Ezekiel, with his 48 chapters in his word, of course, okay, this uh, chapter putting chapter um, identification where came later by the scribes that actually put them seg segmented this for our easy understanding. So prophet Ezekiel is the man that actually are talking about now. And so the book that we read is authored by this man, Ezekiel. But I also minded it to know the meaning of the word, the name Ezekiel. Of course, we cannot dive it deeper into Hebrew, but commentaries have talked about him as Ezekiel, meaning that strengthened by God. I remembered my little Hebrew, that strength is Hazak. And so Ezekiel, strengthened by God, and his book has 48 chapters authored by him. And it is one of these books that we read about all the time. I know that there are many people that have read this book. But what have you learned? What have you picked from there? From this major prophet, from this writing prophet. Writings say that Ezekiel was born in Jerusalem. He grew up in Jerusalem. And um, he was trained in Jerusalem. Now meaning that the places in which you are born make us. And I praise God for this statement. The places in which we are born make us. 
They either make us or any make us. Now, Ezekiel was born in Jerusalem. And actually, I we are told that he was in the lineage. He was being trained. He was being prepared to become a priest in the house of the Lord. And that is the temple. And so he grew up there. He trained there. I mean, he grew up there and he was prepared there. Now, as he was growing up where he was, of course, actually, this is how this makes his big assignment come. Later on, he becomes a prophet to the people of God. Now, think, consider your birth circumstances. Consider your environment in which he was born. What effect has it had about you, upon you? Has it made you? Has it unmade you? Now, the thing is, depending on how you have appropriated yourself, where you are born, when you look at the history, when you look at, when you back a track, you really see that actually some of us have reached where we are, but our history has made us. And so we appreciate, and this is what makes you to say, thank you, God. If you were born in poverty, you say, yes, I was born in that village. I was born, you know, in that circumstance. But look, the fact that God has brought me. And so Ezekiel is giving us, the Bible talks about where he was born. Historians have written, theologians have written where he was born. And what is most important in his book, of course, actually, we shall just read a few words, a few lines, a few verses in chapter one that will set pace for our discussion. Now, just get there, Ezekiel chapter one, and you'll discover that actually a few things will come out very, very vividly. And it says that in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, I was among the exiles by the Heber Canal. The heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiakim. And the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Booz, in the land of the Chaldeans by the Heber Canal. And the hand of the Lord was upon him there. The hand of the Lord was with him there. And the fact that actually they mention that he was among the exiles, beloved of God. We have talked about many of these prophecies. We talked about Isaiah. We talked about Jeremiah and with the Lamentations. Now listen to me. This is now exile time. Ezekiel was among the exiles. People had been taken into exile. And we have labored, we have tried to explain how, why, and how these people were taken into exile. What led to their deportation into exile? And so Ezekiel was among them. And so, in verse 4, he said that, I, As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness surrounded it and the fire flashing forth continually. And in the midst of the fire, as it were gleaming metal, and from the midst of, of it came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the human likeness. And he continues explaining the vision that he saw. Now, I just want to put you back into chapter 1, verse 1, that I was among the exiles by the Heber Canal. The heavens opened, and I saw visions of God. Now, this is very important for somebody who calls himself or herself a prophet. Remember, we explained who the prophet is, the two prophets, the first prophet. Now, this one, heaven opening. And he says he saw the visions of God. And it is this actually these visions. You discover that there are so many here in these 48 chapters that actually this man wrote, this man, it, it, they shaped his message while he was among the exiles. And so it gives me a message, first of all, that where you are, the circumstances in which you are, the environment in which you are, when God has picked you, when God has selected you, 
then be a person of difference, a person that is used in that situation. For instance, Ezekiel in exile, he himself an exile like the rest. He was not overtaken by the circumstances in which he was, but he remained the spokesperson of the message. Now, you may be also in an environment, you may be in a situation, you may be in a place, maybe a worker place, maybe a family, maybe wherever. Have you taken your position? It challenges me that actually Ezekiel took his position as a priest and a prophet in the presence of the Lord. And he displayed the message that was meant to be so. And so friends, in our environment, in our circumstances, in our workplaces, in our family, in our environment in which we are, in our neighborhoods, there is something that actually Ezekiel teaches us here, that even when we are among them, we have to have to be the light of the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that a city that is built on a hill can never be hidden. The reason why he says you are the light of the world. And also among the Israelis, Ezekiel was their light. And so friends, this is very, very important that actually Ezekiel brings it. He saw visions. He saw uh, prophecies coming to him and he reached out to fellow captives. He reached out to fellow exiles. He reached out to fellow sufferers. And so it is a message that actually I bring forward that even wherever you are, reach out to the fellow sufferers. Reach out to the fellow, you know, whoever they are. Reach out. In the hospital, reaching out to the fellow sick people. Ezekiel never kept quiet. Ezekiel moved with his message and because actually this is evident that actually his book was written while he was in exile in Babylon. And it is talked about as he was among the second group that was taken. Others had already been taken already. They were already there. And now he himself was taken later and he became a great news to them there while they were suffering there. And so what else does it teach us that this book is that God is mindful of his people, even when at one moment we erred, we deviated, and we moved away from his laws. But look, his presence was even there with them in Babylon. He cares for his people, wherever they are. Even in the hospital, he cares. Even in the death, God still cares. Wherever it is, it has taught me so much that actually even in exile, God remains God. Even in suffering, God remains God. And so the reason why God calls his servants, the prophets, if things are not going well, he calls them to be watchmen. And we shall get time and look, talk about this particular one, the watchmen, the watchmen, the watchmen, the people that warn, the people that rebuke, the people that correct, the people that direct, the people that guide. So in our society, we need guidance. We need a direction. We need warning. We need a rebuke where things are not going right. Now, when danger is about to come, there is reason for the watch person, for the watchman to warn, to sound an alarm. And we shall dive into that one a little bit deeper. Now, remember Jerusalem had been destroyed, but there had been warnings. Isaiah warned, Jeremiah warned, and now Ezekiel is also in exile, but also so warning. And so Ezekiel saw into the future. That even when these people were in exile, he was telling them, time is coming, time is coming, time is coming. That you will return, you'll be back home into your 
land. So looking beyond the tragedy is the point that actually I see in this book. Looking beyond the trouble is very, very important. Looking beyond the situation. Now I urge you to look beyond the situation. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. It could be good situation, but look beyond it. Is it in richness? Is it in the soft life? Look beyond the situation. Is it in trouble? Is it in sickness? Is it in poverty? Look beyond that situation. Ezekiel was looking beyond. And he leaves me with a very, very important message here. So people are neither judged because of their, what, what their parents did or what their situations meant to them, but the current situation means a lot. And so I just want to very, very, quick, very quickly, because in a short time, to segment the prophecy of Prophet Ezekiel. Chapters 1 to 3 has been segmented as his call. He was called to be a watchman, to offer warnings. Warnings of the pestilence, of the sufferings that were, come, that were coming. And remember, I read chapter 1, verse 1, how he saw visions, visions upon visions. And to call people to repentance, which is actually very, very important. And we exist for that, by the way. If there is anyone in our generation who is talking about, who is not talking about repentance, because some people think that your repentance is the gospel of the past. Listen to me. Repentance is at the center. The reason why Jesus began his ministry, when you read Mark 1 following, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so this is important. This is critical. They're actually calling people to repentance. So in chapters 1 to 3, he's called, Ezekiel is called, to, he ate the, the word, he eternalized it, and he preached conviction, and he preached with passion. He became the watchman, and he asked the people to watch their actions, to watch their situations. And so, this is important, chapters 1 to 3. And how I pray that actually you find time to read chapters 1 to 3. Chapters 4 to 24. Listen, what I found, I was amazed. Every, I mean, I'm always amazed that every time I read this book of Ezekiel, it's very, very illustrative. And some of the things you ask, whether if I was the one, whether I would have been able to manage the situations. Listen, it uses symbols representing the wickedness and the destruction of the nation. Isaiah was also told to do many things, illustrative things, to tell the people what was going to happen to them. Now, even Ezekiel was told, when you read chapter 4, you see that actually he's told to take a brick and write some words on the brick, signifying what would happen there, 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 then. And take a brick and lay it before you and engrave on it a city, even in Jerusalem, and put siege words on it is. And so, friends, this is very, very important that you take time to read these chapters. And then chapter 25 to 32 talks about wickedness of the other nations, the neighbors, meaning actually God is a God that judges, judges not only his own, but also the neighbors who mistreat others. And so friends, listen to me, that seven nations are, are named here, and uh, they are told never to dare judge or challenge God. So it led to the prophecy against them. Now, when you read chapters 33 to 48, that's the last part of the book, talks about the shepherds, the leaders. So he reproved the leaders, the poor shepherds, the, you know, the shepherds, the leaders that mind their own business. And so he still speaks to us, still speaks to you, who is a shepherd, who is a leader. And it's important that the Lord himself, time will come when he will be the true shepherd of his people. And so friends, why must we be disqualified? 
because we are not doing our work well. Why must you be disqualified? Because you are not rendering service well. Let us take our position as leaders, as shepherds, to guide God's people, and so that we shall not be disqualified. And this is important that uh, you think through this message. And if I'm a leader now, I pray that God will enable me to continue being a leader and to continue being impacting, impactful of other people. Because time comes when God says, I will retrieve the responsibility from you. So friends, may God help us. May God help you. Ezekiel, I'm just, I've just spread all through because there are 48 chapters and there's a message that is actually for you and for me. Now, as we walk our walk in this life, as we do our work in this life, let us remember that God watches, that God sees you, that God knows you, that even in exile, that even in a situation wherever you are, God is still watching and God still cares. But as a leader, remember that I should remain qualified for the work. And so may God continue qualifying you for the work that you have to do as a leader, as a church leader. And this addresses pastors, clergy, all the clergy, whichever step that you are at, God to remain uh, above and above all and to say that you remain a servant in the house of the Lord that will not be qualified because you're not a good shepherd. So friends, may God keep you, may God watch over you, but Jeremiah, Ezekiel is a book that you need to read. Of course, there are many things that you may not understand, but they are messageful. May God be with you. May God grant you an opportunity to continue looking beyond, looking beyond the situation in which you are. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.